Hello and welcome back to another episode of Notion Bonsai. In this video today, we're going to be working on a few ficus species and I'm going to be showing you my way that I'm going to approach these trees in order to develop them in the great bonsai. So these are the ficus species that I'm going to be working on here today. And now compared to the other trees that I've showed on my channel thus far, although I have showed these two little ficuses in a previous video, all of these ficus are indoor trees for me. I don't keep these outside at all. They actually stay in my kitchen where they get sunlight all day from the big window. And I haven't pruned these trees since spring. So let's get started on the first tree. So the tools that I'll be keeping on hand today are gin pliers, some wire cutters, bonsai branch cutters or satsuki shears, some tweezers, branch cutters, chopstick and a paintbrush. I'm just going to keep some one millimeter wire on hand. So the first tree we're going to be working on today is this little Mame ficus benjamina that we worked on in a previous video. These were grown from cuttings and they were wired together at the base. So this is just like a little small maintenance on what to do after the wire begins to bite in at the bottom where they've been held together to create this clump style bonsai. Although it's been a short space of time since these trees were wired together, they've now started to fuse at the base. So I'm just going to grab a paintbrush and brush back to see what's going on. All I'm doing now is just brushing away some of the topsoil to reveal where the trees are fusing. I'm just going to snip the wire that's holding the clump style together. You can see here there's a piece of wire. So I'm going to pull that. Now it could be the wire that's holding the tree in the pot or it could be the wire that's holding the clump cell together. I may actually need to remove this from the pot, but I don't want to disturb the roots too much as it's not repotting season at the moment. See if I cut these wires here. Okay. So already I can see it's got a lovely mat of healthy roots. And for the short space of time that this was planted, I'm really happy with how this is looking. So now I can just use the tweezers and pull the wire out from where it was holding it into the pot, just like this. There's another wire I got out. I think part of the reason why there are so many roots is because there's actually more than one tree here. So it's, in a sense, grown one, two, three, four, five times as fast as a normal tree would. And being in a small pot, it filled it quickly. I'm just going to dig down a little bit here. Not disturbing the roots too much. I'm not going to cut any roots. Just digging down from the surface. And I can't see any wire holding this little clump together. So I may have just removed it when I pulled the wire out. And I can safely say that these trees have now been successfully fused at the base. And now from an aesthetic point, when you look at this clump style, it looks pretty nice. But what if these trees were to be a little bit more fanned outwards from the clump where they're fused now at the base? Just a little bit of bend and flare would add so much more to the design of this little clump style. So to give them that bend, I'm going to just add a little piece of this thin wire. So before I apply some wire, I'm just going to give the roots a little mist here with some water. That just stops them drying out. It's important you don't let the roots dry out whenever they're exposed to air like this, as once the roots dry out, them roots that are dry are basically dead. So I'm going to take a little length of wire so I'm just going to add the wire here to the bottom of the tree. Now because this is a clump style, I'm going to wire one branch to the branch next to it. Just like the two branch principle whenever we wire branches on one tree. Just going to make sure there's enough length here by measuring and start twisting around. And now I'm going to bring the wire around this way on the other branch. So one branch is anchored to the other. Here there's a little dead branch that was once here before. Just cut that off. You can see already the ficus is starting to produce some of the sap. Quite sticky too. I think they actually make rubber from ficus trees. Before I shape this tree, I would like to give it a nicer pot than the one it's in. I'm going to do like a safe repot, almost like a slip pot, where I just place this into a new pot and add new soil without disturbing the root ball too much. Whenever you repot a tree, you always ask the question to yourself, how big do I want this tree to get? If I were to put this tree in a slightly bigger pot, 
it would grow a lot healthier, more vigorously. If it's restricted in a pot this small, it won't grow quite as fast. So I'm gonna be moving this tree from this pot to this pot, which is a slightly bigger terracotta pot, just to encourage this tree to thicken a lot faster. It's gonna look something like this. So I'm gonna use two soil types for this repot. In the bottom of the pot, I'm gonna put a mix of my standard soil mix, which is pumice, akadama, lava rock, and a little bit of compost. And all I want is just a little bit of this at the bottom of the pot. And now here, this is a mix of pumice, akadama, and lava rock with no compost. And compared to this mix, it's a lot finer grit, which is a lot more preferred for younger trees like this. So I'm just gonna put some of this into the pot. I'm gonna stir it up with what I've already mixed in here. So we have a mix of different grits. And this will encourage lots and lots of fine fibrous new roots, just like we did in this last one here, with the amount that developed. I almost forgot to add some wire to hold the tree in place. I just fed some wire up through the bottom. Now let me see. I'm just gonna raise this up a little bit more so that we have a layer now of just the fine grit stuff. And because this is a circular pot that I'm planting it in the middle, I don't really need to worry on the front of the tree. I just gotta make sure the angle is nice and straight. I wire this up now. I'm actually gonna bring the wire around the clump instead of through it, so that the wire that I used to wire it in kind of acts like a piece of wire to hold the clump together as well. I'm taking extra care when using the chopstick to work in the soil and I don't press too hard against the little delicate roots. It's just create a little bit of movement from here, maybe evenly space the clump too. I'm not gonna do any pruning to the top of this tree. I'm gonna wait until spring before I do any of that because we've already done so much work to the bottom. Nor does this tree really need a prune. I'm gonna grow it pretty long so I can thicken the base a lot faster. All right, let's move on to the next tree. This tree is what is known as a ficus ginseng, and it has two different ficus species. One on the bottom where you get these big bulbous roots and a different species on the top. And these trees as bonsais go and house plants, they sell for relatively cheap. I got this, I think for eight pounds. This is a tree to take cuttings from as a parent plant and to experiment on as it grows. But personally, I'm not a big fan of the sort of bulbous root part of the tree and the graft at the top here. But nevertheless, it is a tree to work on and I'm just gonna give this a light prune. Now looking at the branch structure of this tree, I can clearly see that one side of the tree is a lot heavier in growth than the other side. So the first thing I'd like to do is balance that out. And I'm gonna start with this branch here. Okay, that's how much I've cut off there. On this branch here, you can see this is where it was cut last. I'm just gonna tidy that up a little bit here. And now as this branch grows out, I'm gonna directional prune by leaving a leaf growing on the outside and cut it to here. And now moving around to this side of the tree, I cut that down also. Again, I'm always leaving a leaf on the outside so that whenever the canopy develops, it grows outwards and not inwards. The leaves that you keep on the tree is the direction in which the next branch will grow. Here. There is a little cleaning up I can do on this branch here that didn't survive from the last prune. Now I may come back in spring and dremel out this section of the tree where it's hard dead wood, where the graft was made, and then we might be able to get some nicer scar tissue around here to make this area thicker. And now just to finish off with this tree, I'm gonna go around all the areas I cut and use some sealant. This is the sealant I'm using. And just stop any more moisture escaping from the tree that way. You don't have to do this as ficus tend to seal themselves naturally, but it's just something I like to do to ensure that the branches will live. I also find spraying some water over the area tends to seal it 
pretty well. I'm gonna come back in spring and give this a proper repot. And then if you want to, you can actually take the pieces that you've cut off this ficus, remove the lower leaves, and if you stick these in some water or soil, they'll grow roots and you'll have another ficus tree. And from my experience, cuttings from ficus generally root so, so easily. In fact, that brings us on to our next tree, which is a cutting from this tree. And look at the size of it. I grew this from a cutting two years ago. Now, if I wanted to grow this to become a shorter tree, I would probably trunk chop it here, but I don't want that. What I want to do with this tree is develop it into quite a tall tree. So I wanna let this leader grow. But what I'm noticing here, lower down on this branch, if I let this branch develop any further, this part of the trunk will actually become too thick and it will ruin the sort of tapering of the trunk. If I remove some of these lower leaves, I'll be able to explain what I mean. In here, where this branch emanates from the trunk. So I'm gonna remove that entire branch. And I can also prune a little bit off the trunk. Just to help the taper here, as you can see, it's sort of, it doesn't flow smoothly quite yet. So to help the taper, this is a new tool I'm using that I didn't show at the start. It's a concave branch cutter. And it just sort of takes a bite out of the tree and that will help us taper. This will scar over flush then. And because that's quite a massive uh, cut on a really important part of the tree, which is the trunk, definitely gonna seal this over. And that's all I'm gonna do to this tree. I'm gonna just let it grow healthy now from here on and maybe I want it to be a bigger tree. So in spring, I'll repot this into a bigger pot. Now this tree, I showed this tree in an earlier video also, which is the weeping ficus, also known as the ficus benjamina. At the moment, there's wire still holding this little clump together. So I just wanna get in there and remove that piece of wire. It's quite difficult to see in there, but I find it. I may need to take this out of the pot to see what's fully going on, but this is the wire here. Look how vigorous the roots are too. They're growing from the bottom of the pot. Okay, this is a very healthy tree. Ah, okay. Now that I dig down here, I'm starting to see where the wire begins and ends. So that's a piece of it. Now because the wire is quite far in around the trunk and in through the roots, I'm gonna give this tree a full repot. And it's actually okay to repot ficus during the year, but it is best to repot in spring. But because I'll be keeping these trees indoors, I'll be able to give them more care than they would have outdoors. So I'm fine to repot this tree, but if you have a ficus you're unsure about, I would recommend repotting it in spring. The same with most trees, it's better just to repot trees in spring because spring is the time when there's lots of energy in the trees. The energy starts to travel up from the roots into the foliage. And whenever you see the buds start to open on trees, that's when the energy has moved from the roots, which means the roots are then free to work on. So because there's energy in the roots here and there's an energy transfer between the roots and the foliage, I'm not gonna prune many roots because of the time of year it is now. I think this is one of the first trees I've worked on in a video where I'm not raking away nasty composty soil. This is just pure pumice, academa and lava rock. And I have to say it is such a pleasant experience when the tree has been put in the nice free draining soil that sort of falls away easily. In general, you'd like to repot your ficus maybe every two to three years. In terms of fertilization, I would fertilize these ficus maybe every two weeks during the growing season. And then as winter sets in, maybe every month, once a month. See how easily the soil's fallen off this? Okay, I find a wire, I'm just gonna wiggle it. Okay, we've got a wire out. Here is the wire that was holding the clump together and it actually travels around here. So I'm gonna see if I can pull it out of there. Okay. Now where does it go from here? I think the wire travels behind that. Ah, okay. So there it is. Great, we've removed that. So now it's just loosening the soil, doing a little bit of minor root pruning, just on the really thick roots that don't really feed the tree. And oh, we find some drainage mesh, like circular piece. A thick root here, which I kind of like because it's starting to form a lovely nabari. And I can see the tree hasn't fully fused here as it's slightly 
wobbly from the trunk, but the small one on this side has fused very well. So maybe another year and this tree will fuse to that one, but for now I'm just gonna wire them two trees together. Don't wanna tighten the wire too much around these. Just a little bit of wire to hold them in place. I'm gonna put this drainage mesh back in the bottom of the same pot, same soil back in. Now, because there isn't much wind indoors, I'm not gonna be wiring this tree into this pot. I'm just gonna let the roots develop naturally in it and that will hold the tree in the pot. Also working the soil in with a chopstick will make the tree fairly stable. So I just got an extra piece of um, that fine grit soil that we had before. And that's that tree now nicely placed into the pot again. So there's just one last thing I'd like to do with this tree and that's remove this dead branch here. A little bit of sealant on that. And that's all I'm gonna do to this tree for today. Now the final tree that I'm gonna be working on is also a cutting, just like this one from the ficus ginseng. But I actually filmed the progression of this tree last year. And now this is the tree today. Unlike the other tree here, I don't want this tree to develop quite long. Instead, I wanna try and keep this tree compact and short. So I'm just gonna trim it here and here. And that's all I'm gonna to do to that tree for today. And all that's left to do now is give all the trees a watering. And there you guys have it. That's just a little quick video on pruning and shaping ideas that you can do on your ficus. In order to just take them that one step further of becoming more ramified and having a better branch structure and just general maintenance on ficus bonsai. The only one thing that I would do differently is whenever I took a bite out of this tall ficus here, I just wouldn't dig in so much because it's gonna take a little bit longer to heal now. I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you wanna keep up to date on the progression of some of my trees, be sure to follow me on Instagram. I'll leave a link in the description of this video. And on that, thank you so very much for watching.